Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Max Stern Athletic Center. And I feel like I'm having some deja vu because just six days ago, these two teams, the Yeshiva University Maccabees and the Mount St. Vincent Dolphins, faced off. And now we are back, but a lot more is on the line as it is playoff time, a primetime matchup. My name is Akiva Erlbaum. I am joined in the booth tonight by former Sarachek MVP Asher Dower. And Asher, tell us about how both of these teams have gotten to this point and their matchups thus far this season. Yeah, so these two teams are very familiar with each other, having played twice already this season, as you mentioned, just six days ago. The Dolphins came out with a 72-64 victory in that one with a very impressive 16-0 run late in the second half there. Earlier when these two teams played, Back in November, I believe, the Max came out with a comfortable 14-point win in that one, with Zebby Salmon and Max Zakon putting up 29 and 23 points respectively. Look for them to keep the ball rolling in this one, Akiva. Now, this game may look very different than the last, as the Max are back to full strength. They're a fully healthy roster this game. But let's go to the other side of the floor, Mount St. Vincent. Talk to me about who are going to be some of the key contributors and who's going to be able to have an impact on this playoff game. So for the Dolphins, the two main threats to watch out for are number 11, Joshua Cabazudo, and number 4, DJ Tucker. Cabazudo's a 6'1 senior guard. He's the Dolphins' leading scorer, averaging 15 points a game. He's quick, he's an athletic guard, he's an absolute force on the glass, averaging 6.4 boards also. Tucker is a 6'3 guard, his backcourt mate averaging 13.7 points a game with 6.9 rebounds. He's very quick and he'll look to use that quickness to beat the Max in transition tonight. And we know that the Max dropped the last one to this team, but this is where it really counts. This is where it really matters. What are the Max gonna have to do to pull this one off and advance in this Skyline playoffs? So starting on the defensive end, it's going to be sticking to game script. We know that the Max get a detailed scouting report before every game, so it's going to be simple things like forcing guys to their offhand, trying to exploit matchups they think they have an advantage in. On the offensive end, it's going to be staying patient. We know the Dolphins like to sit back in a tough defensive zone. The Max are going to have to remain patient, swing the ball around the outside, maybe run a little bit of inside-out action and stretch this zone defense out. And overall for the Max, it's just going to be maximum effort every single play, all 40 minutes. We know they're getting Max Zakheim and Sanjewski back in this game. They're going to have some fresh legs coming off the bench. So they need complete firepower every single play in this one, Akiba. Well, Asher, we're in for a real treat tonight. I can't wait to get back up to the booth. We've got anthems. We've got starting lineups. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. My story started with a letter in the mail. I took my first steps in New York and felt the energy all around me. I connected with my Rebbe on the first day of Sheer. My story was learning that the mitochondria is more than just the powerhouse of a cell. I made my painting from scratch. Like, really, from scratch. My roommates came here from four different countries. We lit one menorah together. My story was practice every night. Chavruta every night. Subway rides. City lights. In my story, my name was in the headlines. The bylines. The University Museum. My story was my internship at the Supreme Court. Dancing with the Israeli flag in Times Square. My story was participating in the only hackathon, not on Shabbat. The Career Center found me my first job at a top business analytics firm. My story was becoming best friends with my Chavruta. And holding that NCAA trophy. My story started here. My story is just beginning. We are all one. There is a big power that holds us together. And it's not only about uh, where you live or what language do you speak. It's all about love, if you ask me. This kind of unity can't be broken. That's why I know in the end we will prevail. And don't forget the kids playing ball because that's life, that's life. And we're gonna go on living.
Hello to all of the listeners at home. I'm Akiva Earlbaum. I'm joined by Asher Dower in the booth. And the starting lineups for tonight. Number 12, guard Zevi Samet for the Maccabees. Number 13, Roy Ikovic. Number 15, back from injury, Orson Jeski. Number 22, forward Dotan Bardachev. And number 32, Adi Markovic. Head coach Elliot Steinmetz as we go over to the other side of the floor. And the Mount St. Vincent Dolphins. Number two starting at guard, Connor Ween. Another guard, Kevin Adjaming. Number four, DJ Tucker. Number 10, Alex Chi. And number 11, Joshua Cabazudo. As we are almost ready for tip off here, it's gonna be Roy versus Racy. And we are off. Ball is secured by Mount St. Vincent as they look to set up their offense early. The crowd getting into it early, trying to set the tone for this matchup. Great pass inside. Looks like Mount St. Vincent might have gotten away with a the walk there. It's a dog fight in the floor. Great hustle, Adi Markovic, and it's going the other way. Adi gets it at the high post to Roy. Zevi Sam at quarter three. No good. And it's a fast break the other way. Tucker ducks the ball with authority. And that is one way to start the game for Tucker. And tough start for YU there. An excellent defensive possession to open the game. Get a great look with their best shooter in Sam and not able to get that one to fall. Long shots lead, lead to long rebounds. The Dolphins able to get the first bucket to go as Dotan Bardichev not able to get that layup to go. Dolphins will go the other way in a fast break. Here's Ween. He had a tough look there for the finish and Zevi Samet securing the rebound. It's been a lot of fast breaks early in this contest thus far. Roy at the high post, looking for the corner. Samet pulls it again. That one's good. And the Max take the early lead following that Zevi Samet three. We know he hits those. Expect no shortage tonight from Zevi Samet. We know the Dolphins like to sit back in that comfortable defense as Markovic gets a little bit too aggressive on the perimeter. But the YU Max with a great offensive possession there as Markovic will check out of the game early. Getting the ball inside to Roy where he likes to have it at the high post. Great job remaining patient, not getting flustered inside the lane there, kicking it out to their sharpshooter, or the Stark shooter rather, and Zevi Salmon able to knock it down from the corner. And here's PJ Tucker. Great defense there. A wild chuck outside, Tucker gets the shooter's touch and that's a three ball. The score is five to three, courtesy of Mount St. Vincent. And the cold three ball right there from Tucker was well defended, Dotan Berdichev right in his face, looked him directly in the eyes and pulled it anyway, able to get the nice roll as Sanjewski gets an unfortunate roll, not able to get that layup to go and then picks up the foul himself. And we would like to acknowledge the return of Max Star, Max Zackheim. And I've been waiting to say this for a long time. Zackheim is backheim. And we are ready to see what he can contribute to tonight's matchup. I think you may have just contributed to 20 or so viewers signing off with that joke right there. But a nice back cut, able to get the layup to go. So some good offensive play from the Dolphins in the first three minutes of this one, Akiva. Absolutely. Zachheim gets it into Roy. Great ball movement here by the Max. Dotan, very patient, but he forces the turnover. 
the Max were a little too active with those hands, getting called for the early foul. So three early fouls on the Max, not even three minutes into this game. As Sanjewski, I believe that may be his second, checking out. But Dotan Radicha with the ball in the corner there. I would like to see him pull that one. Not the best three-point shooter for this Max team, but he can definitely get it to go from out there. Look for him to try and get his shot going if he keeps getting open looks like that. As Ween thought about it, goes up for the floater, no good. Great rebound inside by the big man. And there's two for Adrian Racy to extend this Mount St. Vincent lead early on. As Freundlich seeing his first minutes of the game, but yet another turnover. They have plagued the Max so far. Ajiming gets it out to Racy. Racy lost the handle. Another three ball. That one's no good. Zakheim looking to push the pace. A good idea from Dotan to try to get it into Roy. With some good active hands by the Dolphins. Yeah, and why are you telegraphing some passes inside? These passes are coming from two close quarters. Look for them to space out a little bit, try and stretch this comfortable 2-3 zone and remain patient. Looks like they're getting sped up a little bit and unnecessarily so. Dotan with the right pass in the corner. Samet splash! Zevi Samet with two early threes. He's the only one on the scoreboard right now for the Max. But Racy with a three of his own. Rebounded and Sam it again. Slows it down. Sam it thought about it. Roy looking to use his size, gets it out. Corner three, Effie Freundlich. That one's no good. And a controversial call inside. The Max thought that was their ball on the offensive glass. The refs thought otherwise, and we're going the other way. And though Forenluff not able to get that three to go from the corner, that's the, exact, that's the exact shot they're looking for. A good unselfish pass from Zach Heim, though we know probably a better shooter. The defender closes it out to him smartly, forcing the ball to Forenluff in the corner, coming off the bench. Not able to get the three to go. And some intense defense from the YU Max. Able to get a jump ball. And they will now take possession. Down three points with 15-11 left in this first half. And the Max are showing a tenacity and a hunger. As we know how much this game means to them. We know how much they want to advance to the next round of these playoffs. They're going to have to leave it all out on the line here tonight. Dotan into Zevi, great pass inside. Roy defended by two, but he has the soft touch. And the Max are within one. Great touch pass right there from Zevi Salmon on the baseline. As the YU Max will now pick up their fifth foul, so just two away from being in the bonus, with almost 15 minutes remaining in this half. So, we mentioned in the pregame show, this YU Max team wants to come out energized, maybe a little bit too aggressive to start this game as they trail by one point. Yeah, it's the right attitude, Asher, but they've just got to be a little bit more careful and avoid those mental errors so they don't get into early foul trouble. Samet. Out to Zach Hine, penetrates that lane as he does so well, and he finishes on the right side. Max Zakheim puts the Max up for the first time this game. Nearly a steal there for Effie. Here's Racy. Cabezudo getting that first step and finishing on the right hand side. We know he's such a capable scorer. 
and a great hesitation right there at the top of the key. Very Shea Gildress Alexander-esque right there. Really probing on the outside, taking his time and getting to the basket comfortably for the lay-in. And a foul. Dotan Bardachev gets to the line, and I'm so proud of you for getting that one down. I'm, I'm going to try to say it. Shea Gildress Alexander-esque. Is that believe, what you said? I believe so. Was that accurate? Don't ask me to try it again because I'll probably botch it, but I think I got it the first time, so we'll take it. As Samet, before we could blink, gets another three off, but no good. And here is Ween going inside the mid-range, Jimmy. And that one's good. Max makes the defender fly with that pump fake. Dotan inside, what ball movement by the Max again. Some deja vu there, but the Max are being careful. Dotan with a big rebound inside. And an aggressive play in a dog fight by Dotan Bardachev getting rewarded with two points. And a great presence right there in the paint from Dotan Bardachev getting the offensive rebound and the putback to go for two. As there's a three, no good. Zach Heim secures the rebound. Dotan out to Adi. Good hands there by Mount St. Vincent. Capizzuto the going the other way. Ween, good finish over the taller defender. And it's a three-point ball game. Pretty spin move inside by Zakheim, but he doesn't get it to fall. That one would have been on the highlight reel. And the charge is taken by Max Zakheim. A great take right there from Zakheim, showing he can do it on both ends of the floor, putting his body on the line, and a massive call in the Max's favor. Would have been the sixth foul on them and already would have been putting the Dolphins in the bonus with 12 minutes remaining in this first half so a great job by Zakheim getting the charge call right there and Zakheim obviously coming off of that injury he's got to be careful not to hurt himself again so valuable to this Max team as Effie with a strong finish inside a beautiful look from Dotan at the high post and it is a one point game yet again Ween a quick mid range shot no good Ooh, spin move, Zakheim almost loses the defender. Gets it out to Dotan. Behind the back, some razzle dazzle into the three. Zakheim can't get it to fall. Here's Ween. Gets it over to Tucker. Inside, but Samet comes in with the steal. Zevi Samet to the lane. Markovic corner. Bad pass there by Zevi. He's got to be careful with that, but Adi goes inside. Samet three ball is no good, but Dotan is everywhere. He is not going out without a fight. And it looks to stay Max ball. Yeah, great job, Bob Ditch of crashing the glass. You mentioned that this 2-3 zone is effective in that you're able to clog up the passing lanes with active hands, but the Dolphins picking up a lot of steals. But on the other hand, it leaves you vulnerable to giving up offensive rebounds as you don't really know who you're picking up with a lot of those three-point attempts for the max. Hard to be able to pick out exactly what guy you should be boxing out, leading to a lot of offensive rebounds for Dotan Bardichev in the paint. And the Dolphins will now pick up another foul. That'll be their fourth. So a lot of fouls already early in this one. A lot of aggressiveness from both teams. Exactly what we expected in this first round of the Skyline playoffs, Skiva. And that one was on DJ Tucker with the name so similar to PJ Tucker. It's almost scary. Here's Tucker with a spin move of his own. And Capizzuto 
Ween with the quick three. There's Dotan, might have gotten away with the travel. No, he did not get away with it, the ref saw it. And Dotan being a gentleman, admitting to his sin. And we are going the other way. I was about to say, it looked initially like he was frustrated with the call. Almost immediately did a 180, slapped his, his chest a couple times and said khatati to the ref. I think that'll be his second foul call on this one. Taking responsibility for your actions as Cabazudo, and it's going the other way yet again. Max Zakheim has drawn two offensive fouls today. He is showing his heart and his passion as the Max now have the opportunity to go up and take a lead as Gov Landau, the captain of the YU Max, entering the game, and Zevi Samet will take a break. And the floor general, Adi Markovic, barking out orders, trying to call a set play. Dotan looking for the cutter. Great defense by Chi. Nearly a steal there. Adi gets it back out to Effie with almost no time. I think he got hit on that one. Dotan inside. And it's good. Dotan turning garbage into gold with the second chance opportunity, but right away, Chi, before he could blink, gets a finish of his own, and the action is starting to rise in this game. A tough finish right there through contact from Chi, taking it straight into the chest of the defender, Berdichov. Looked like Frohnlich was gonna come over and swat that one out of bounds on the help side. Unfortunately for him, picking up the foul call, a great M1 take right there, able to get the points right back and trying to convert right now for the three-point play. And the crowd is getting very loud on this one free throw. But she is unaffected. He hits the free throw. And Freundlich. Landau inside, protecting the ball. But he walked. He got a little bit too ahead of himself there. And a few travel calls, actually. The refs are very particular about those. And it is hurting the Max, forcing several turnovers for them. And here's Capizzuto, someone who's so good at taking the defender off the dribble. But he was in the right place at the right time there. And he got the easy two after the air ball from the big man. Dotan with the smaller defender in Chi. Fornlich. Landau out to Adi. He's got Fornlich. An easy two, but no good. Dotan hustles again. And Dotan Bardachev is such an asset to the max on the offensive glass. Something that they've really struggled with for a lot of this season. It's good to see them working on some of those bad habits. And Gov Landau gets it out to Max Zakhelm. Dotan again, out to Effie. Great pass inside, stuffed at the rim. As Jalen Lewis with the authoritative block. And what a block right there from Lewis. As Capizzuto not able to get the three-pointer to fall. Oh! And he gets revenge. It's Freundlich as Zakheim looks to thread the needle, unfortunately throwing it out of bounds. But what an incredible sequence of events right there. You could not have written that up any better. The same two players in Jalen Lewis and Effie Freundlich blocking each other on back-to-back -back possessions. Cabazudo, not sure what the call was there. It looks like an offensive foul. In fairness, on both of those blocks, don't think either of those were going in, so maybe the defender's actually doing the offensive player a favor. It looked like Freundlich took off 
from six feet away from the hoop. Not sure if he was gonna get that dunk attempt to fall anyway. But some great defensive play from both of those players and Lewis and Freundlich as Wayu looks to cut into this four point deficit. And we know that Freundlich has the bunnies. We know he has the hops. He's done it before, but that one a little ambitious. And he was denied at the rim as Samet with the floater to bring Wayu within two. And just a comfortable drive right there from Sam. It looks so fluid, taking it into the lane. Two dribbles, easy. Little floater gets it to go. If the defense is going to disrespect him from that close, look for him to continue to get that shot off as Chi not able to get that jumper attempt to go. As that rebound was secured by Yoav Oselka, who just came into the game. Yoav from Givationim, Israel. A recent addition to the Max who could help in terms of their size. And Dotan continuing to stay aggressive. He has the opportunity to hit two and to tie this ball game. And it is time for the Max Live trivia question of the night. And the question is as follows. Who is the all-time University of Mount St. Vincent leading scorer? Again, who is the all-time University of Mount St. Vincent leading scorer? Oh, come on. That's an easy one, Akiva. Maybe for you. But any of you fans out there who think that they know the answer to this question, you can tweet your answer with the hashtag MaxLiveTrivia on Instagram. And it is a tie ball game. The crowd really coming alive, playing a huge factor in this game. Nearly a turnover inside. Bad pass by Capizudo and Freundlich with that length denying that pass. But it's going to remain the Dolphins' ball. Here's Chi getting it in to the guard, Capizudo, with a series of nifty dribbling moves. He might have pushed off there on Markovic. Chi. Didn't really have his feet set, but he hit that one nonetheless. And may get overlooked, but a big no call right there as Markovic tried to pick up the charge. Would have been the third offensive foul on Capazuda right there if he got called for it. We know the leading scorer for them. So a big no call right there. As down low, the Dolphins get called for the foul. That'll be the eighth for them. So already in the bonus of the YU Max, though they'll go to the line for two right here. Looking to tie this game up at 22 as Yoav Oselka looking to produce his first points of the game. And that one hit the rim and no good. And folks, the Svarim sale at Yeshiva University is back. Come join us between now and February 25th to get all of your favorite Svarim at the largest Svarim sale in North America. We are open weeknights, Saturday nights, and all day on Sunday. Come check it out in person at YU's Belfer Hall or check out our website, thesvarimsale.com. The link is in the description of this video. And the steal there by the Max. Effie gets it inside to Oselka. Pretty pass and a finish with the left hand as the YU Max take the one point lead. And a great way to run the floor right there. The big man, as that was all started from Adi Markovic on the defensive end as Capizudo now with two turnovers in a row. Great job for Markovic, really pressuring him outside the three-point line, speeding him up, not letting him sit back and get comfortable in this game as the YU Max take their first lead of this game, 23-22. And we are going to send it down to the sideline where we have Akiva Poppers waiting. Akiva, take it away. Back in the Max Stern Athletic Center, back from injury, first time in a month. I want to just go through what it took for Max to come back, because when he got hurt, the Max thought he was done for the year. He did physical therapy four times a week with Joe Meyer and a world-renowned physical therapist, did pool work four times a week, did mobility workouts at night, did bike cycling at night, did cryotherapy, did cupping, did acupuncture, did deep tissue massage. Anything that existed, Max Zackheim did, and that's why his dedication to this team got him back on the court when he was originally expected to be done for the year. Back to you guys in the booth. Akiva, thank you for that. A testament to the work ethic of Max Zackheim. 
never going down without a fight, and we've seen plenty of that tonight. As we have Adi Markovic setting up the offense. Foynluck inside, nearly had Oselka. Dotan into Foynluck again. Seeing some great patient ball movement by the Max. Oselka can't keep his hands on it. And a good defensive play by Mount St. Vincent. Keeping their feet set, not letting the Max have the edge. Adi nearly came up with the steal there, but he was right next to his coach, Elliot Steinmetz, on the sideline. It's going to be out of bounds. The defensive intensity for the Mac has really picked up. Great job keeping this Dolphins team flustered outside the perimeter, and since the early goings of this game, not letting them get early shots and good shots right at the basket. It's Cabazudo. As the shot clock nearly about to expire, but that is a clutch shot by Luis Vidal, the guard from Easton, PA. As a nice play inside by Dotan Bardachev. And now the Max seeming to have an answer for all of the offense from the Dolphins. As here's Vidal again, finding the cutter. But here's Foynluck going the other way. Going up for the layup. And called for the foul. I thought he was going to go for that dunk again. And the defender stayed right with him. Didn't give him the opportunity to create that space. Yeah, I thought he was going up for the dunk as well. He was staring down that rim with anger as he took his two steps. Not able to get the layup to go, but fortunately... Got the late foul call. And a quick shout out to Ami Nelson, who's watching out in Columbia University. Shout out to Aton Kent and Jonathan Fishman tuning in as well from Washington University. And I'll take this opportunity to shout out my sister, Schiffer Earlbaum. I snubbed her last time. Didn't mean to do that. It was a lapse of judgment, but you got it this time. You made up for it. There's nothing else you could say. As here's Capizudo, aggressively defended by Zevi Samet. Here's Tucker coming in. Capizudo thought about it. Ooh, quick behind the back move there. Ween. And something to note, Saint Mount St. Vincent has been very efficient from the mid-range. Again, I've talked about this before, but mid-range, sometimes a lost art in today's day and age with so much emphasis on the three-point shot. Oh, a quick decision there as Ajamang might have gotten away with a walk, but a pretty finish with some English over Ben Haber. And just like that, Mount St. Vincent secures the lead for themselves. And a pretty Euro step right there. Where did that come from? His first shot attempt of the game. Looks smooth as silk with a nice finish in, transi in transition as he'll look to get another layup to go, extending this lead to three points now. So a quick turnaround right there from the Dolphins will force Elliott Steinmetz and this YU Max team to call a timeout with, so, with 3.05 remaining in this half. And we are going to send it over to the sideline yet again to Akiva Poppers. Akiva, it's all yours. Thanks, guys. We see Kevin Agumanga of Mount St. Vincent making a big difference in this game as he's been active on the break and all over. What I want to highlight is what he did the first time these two teams played at Mount St. Vincent towards the end of the game. Zevi Samet's yarmulke dropped, his keeper, his head covering dropped, and Agumang went and picked it up off the ground, showing what a good guy he is. He didn't have to do it. And it went viral on Twitter. And this is, what, this is the sort of athlete that we have in the Skyline Conference, a guy who will do something which is just right, even though there's no actual benefit for him to it. Back to you guys in the booth. We talk about the character of Ajmang. 
And back when I was in camp, they used to not let play proceed until the yarmulke was picked up. It was called the yarmulke timeout. I don't know what the policy is here in the Max Stern Athletic Center, but Kevin Adjaman doing the right thing, and we applaud his efforts. I think you should start a petition to have that enforced by the NCAA. Anytime a YU Max yarmulke falls on the floor. Dead ball foul, side out. I don't know if that's their top priority right now, but certainly something that they will get to in the future. Here's Ben Haber, the young big man who's had some flashes of greatness early in this season. A great pass inside, and we see the motion offense there as Max Zakheim finishes the two. Great patience, great vision, and a great cut right there for Max Zakheim. Exactly what you need to see against this 2-3 zone. Waiting for your shots, not forcing anything from the outside. And the Hawaii Max has done a great job as this game has progressed. Oh, and a great putback right there from Lewis, skied in from the baseline. Extending this lead back up to three points. But Dota Berdichev has been harnessing his inner Nikola Jokic at the top of the key right there, really stretching out this zone, staying patient. A lot of nice passes, a lot of great assists for him as he looks to set up the offense again right now. Dotan out to Freundlich, sets his feet, lets it fly, no good, but zebi has got the ball. Aggressive inside, what a finish by Zebi Samet. Not taking no for an answer, and he's going to have a chance for a three-point play. Great job from Samet right there off the offensive rebound, not wasting any time at all. One step in the lane, straight into the defender's chest, able to get it to go for the and one, trying to convert it here to tie the game at 32. As Zevi with the three-point play. And folks, subscribe to Max Live on YouTube to make sure you do not miss any amazing Max games and highlights this season. As here's Chi, gets it over to Capizzuto. Capizzuto looking to penetrate. Out to Ween for the three. But that one is no good. Zavi Samet, again with an awkward looking layup. Didn't really have his feet set in that play. Here's Ween, over to Lewis. Lewis with the baseball pass that is not converted. The yeah, ill-advised pass right there from Lewis. And on the previous possession, Z Samet rather, trying to extend what he had done two plays ago, taking it right into the chest of the defender. A great job by Lewis, though, pulling the chair, not letting Sam again, easy two to go. So a minute two remaining in this one. It's been an exciting game thus far. Tied up, we'll see what the YU Max can do to try and extend this lead going into the halftime break, Akiva. As we've got one minute left, one minute left in this half, and we are deadlocked at 32 apiece. An exciting game thus far, and the excitement should only be rising. Effie Freundlich gets it over to Dotan. Haber, Dotan, into Freundlich. Freundlich going from the left-hand side. No good on the finish. She looking. And there is still some separation between the shot clock and the game clock. Capizzuto looks to hold it, but Effie is right in his grill. Defense chance from the Max Faithful. Capizzuto looking to penetrate that lane. Here's a three, Ajamang. No good. Chi gets the ball back. And the ball goes all out of bounds. It looks to be off of the foot of the Max. A heads up play there by the Dolphins. And they're gonna get a chance at a last look here before we go to halftime. Great substitution right here for the Steinmetz. 
Getting the defensive specialist Landau to check in for Salmon, not wanting their star player Salmon to pick up another foul. We've got Ajimang. And I couldn't quite make out what he said there. Asher, any insight? I believe he said delay of game warning on White. Not sure what the call was, whether that was on the fans. Maybe Landau was too close to the defender. Ajaman gets it in. Chi, wide open look and a miscommunication by the Max. But they get away with one there. And a prayer is thrown up by Dar Dotan Bardachev to no avail. And it is 32-32, tie ball game. And we are going to send it to the halftime report. But we will be back after this with some second half action. You will not want to miss it. And then that brings me back to the 7th of October. The 7th of October is in the morning, the siren went on, and the siren in, in the Moshav is saying Tseva Adom, which means red alert. And I see my wife running at me. And I ask her, Shirley, what's going on? And she said, listen, Ziv called, and he t is uh, asking for your help because he Eagle is seriously wounded, and he doesn't know what to do. I checked him, and I see he got a bullet in his back, on the right side of his back. And the bullet went straight through, torn up his right lung. He has difficulty breathing. Uh, my best was to try to give him some peace before he died. And he eventually died in my arms, saying, uh, Benny, tell everybody I love them. I'm leaving, and that's it. He just died. <clears throat> uh, Melech David writes in Tehillim and Psalms, King David writes in Psalms, you know, Hine Matovu Manaim Shevet Achim Gam Yachad. How beautiful it is to see two brothers sitting together. Um, um, and, uh, you know, I, I, it, it is heart wrenching that you. That, that has been taken away from you with, you with your brothers, with your parliament, with your friends. Um, and there is no silver lining, as Rabbi Popko said, but I think I, I sit here now looking at the two of you, and I see two achim, shevet achim gam yacha, two brothers sitting together, representing two communities sitting together. And that, that for me, does fill my heart. That, that, that gives me hope. The Yeshiva basketball team is doing very, very well now, and JBS is broadcasting the game. My take on that is the fact that the Yeshiva team is doing well. It's so great that JBS is doing this. Sadly, Mark, who did the first time we broadcasted a game, when they first made the tournament, he was the MC. He was the anchorman from JBS. So, you know, so much of what Mark wanted to do we're going to try to do as best we can we are. with our limited abilities right. to fulfill you know so many of his dreams my proposal is that we should educate the broader american public about who jews are you know are jews a religion or jews a race or jews a nationality Jews predate all of those categories. It's like non-Jewish societies try to put Jews in a box. Jews predate the box. Who are Jews? We are a joinable tribal group. Joinable is important. Joinable tribal group with a shared history, homeland, and culture. Part of the culture is a non-universalizing religion. What I just said is like a paragraph in English. In Hebrew, it is one word that is two letters long, Am. We are Am Yisrael. That is who we are.
For many decades, NCSY has provided the best summer ever for thousands of teenagers who have joined to take part in all of the great things that the land of Israel has to offer. This summer will undoubtedly be the best summer ever, but also the most meaningful summer ever as we join hands with our brothers and sisters in Israel in rebuilding and making Israel as great as it will be for all of us. These are most uncertain times, without a doubt. We do not know everything that tomorrow will bring. We are still mourning all that we saw yesterday and over the past few weeks and months. But of a few things, we can be certain. We can be certain that Israel will rise again. We can be certain that now, more than ever, is the time to come to Israel and to join in the process of the building of this glorious state. Come join us this summer, now more than ever. I think the answer is just to learn as much as you can about who you are as fast as you can. That is your best defense against all of this. Um, and it's, it's remarkable and frankly depressing what American Jews don't get taught in the United States. Um, and my, my advice to anyone, I guess by this point a decade younger than me, would be to, you know, read up and jump in as fast and as hard and as high up as you can. Honestly, I think that people should be learning about Jewish civilization in public school. I don't understand why they're not. Because the reality is, and you, if you look at a high school history textbook, what does it say about Jews? There's probably a chapter at the end that says they died in the Holocaust. Like, that's the only place where, they're only in the book in the mass grave. And you might say, well, there's a lot of people who aren't in that book. Except that Judaism is foundational to Western civilization. Like, you can't understand Western civilization without understanding Judaism. Who are Jews? We are a joinable tribal group. Joinable is important. Joinable tribal group with a shared history, homeland, and culture. Part of the culture is a non-universalizing religion. What I just said is like a paragraph in English. In Hebrew, it is one word that is two letters long, Am. We are Am Yisrael. That is who we are. We are all one. There is a big power that holds us together. And it's not only about uh, where you live or what language do you speak. It's all about love, if you ask me. This kind of unity can't be broken. That's why I know in the end we will prevail. And don't forget the kids playing ball because that's life. That's life. And we're going to go on living. We're living through a difficult time here for American Jews, but the fact of the matter is that in the sports world, the sports world has been very tolerant to us. The NCAA has more rules than the code of Jewish law, the Shulchan Aruch in Hebrew. And yet within the, within the thousands of rules, they say that if a team doesn't want to, can't play because of religious reasons, We'll defer the game. This is not just a sports story. This is a way of seeing American Jewish history. 
I applaud, I applaud those philanthropists who are closing their checkbooks <laughs> and saying goodbye to Harvard, goodbye to Penn, goodbye to Cornell, goodbye to Brown, goodbye to Berkeley, <laughs> goodbye to all of these schools that once, that once stood for something great and now stand for the decay and the deterioration um, and the shuddering of the, American liberal imag uh, of the American liberal imagination. When you're not wanted, go start your own thing. Be the cool kid. Let others join you. And take note of who did not stand by you, who did not stand by us at a moment like this. That is my proposal for the Jewish future for American Jews. Did you know that 90% of low back pain and sciatica can be treated without surgery? After a detailed evaluation, our physical therapists use gentle, hands-on techniques to alleviate most forms of low back pain. Our physicians have expertise in medication management, as well as a variety of interventional techniques, including trigger point injections. By utilizing a combination of these options, we can help you today. PMNR, the proud sponsor of Yeshiva University Athletics. Let us help you reach your goals at one of our five locations in New York and New Jersey. Well, the Yeshiva basketball team is doing very, very well now, and JBS is broadcasting the game. My take on that is the fact that the Yeshiva team is doing well. And the most interesting thing for me, when people forget about how many games they want, is that when they play in the tournament, the first round game, which takes place on Friday, doesn't, take, doesn't start at 8 o'clock in the evening. It starts at 12 noon. The NCAA, which is the overriding body that controls sports, has more rules than the Shulchan Aruch, the Code of Jewish Law. But they're accommodating us. It's another barometer of where Jews, uh, right. Jews uh, fit in America. So it's so great that JBS is doing this. Sadly, Mark, who did the first time we broadcasted a game, when they first made the tournament, he was the MC. He was the anchor man from JPS. So, you know, so much of what Mark wanted to do, we're going to try to do as best we can we are. with our limited abilities right. to fulfill, you know, so many of his dreams. The Yeshiva basketball team is doing very, very well now, and JBS is broadcasting the game. My take on that is the fact that the Yeshiva team is doing well. It's so great that JBS is doing this. Sadly, Mark, who did the first time we broadcasted a game, when they first made the tournament, he was the MC. He was the anchor man from JBS. 
So, you know, so much of what Mark wanted to do, we're going to try to do as best we can we are. with our limited abilities right. to fulfill, you know, so many of his dreams. And welcome back to the Max Stern Athletic Center for the Leket Israel Halftime Show. And this half is only almost ready to begin. And we got some first half stats courtesy of Leket Israel. The Dolphins were 15 for 30 on field goals as the Max were 12 for 29. And an abysmal shooting day for the Dolphins going just one for nine. And the Max as well, two for 11 as we saw some early ones by Zevi Samet. And 15 to 17 rebounds, eight to nine assists. And Asher, we saw some great flashes from both teams in that first half. Tell us a little bit about what they did. Yeah, right when this game opened up, the YU Max looked a little bit out of sorts. They've gotten more comfortable as this game has progressed. For the Dolphins, Capazudo shooting excellently, excellently from the field, four for five. Their leading scorer so far as DJ Tucker picks up the two early in the second half. So look for the Dolphins to keep running it through Capazudo, their leading scorer this season, as they jump out to an early two-point lead in the second half. Samet, no good in the back door. Here's Roy, good hands by Tucker, doing on both sides of the floor. And a drive inside by Ween. And that fast-paced offense that we saw in the first half has returned. Or out to Zevi, pump fake. And an exaggerated fall there by Or Sanjewski, but he did draw the foul. And haven't seen a lot of Sanjewski in that first half. Maybe a product of him not being 100%. We know he's just returning from that injury. Also, I believe, picked up a couple early fouls. So look for him to try to get going in the second half. Why you definitely in need of some offensive firepower, as interestingly, Max Zakheim starts the second half on the bench. Dotan looking comfortable with that free throw shot, and he ties it up again. And Cabezudo over to Tucker. Tucker with a strong move inside, creating that separation from Adi Markovic. And some great footwork, taking it right into the chest of Adi Markovic. One, two, stop, turn around, and a nice layup. Samet. Or three, yes. Or Sajewski gives YU their first lead of the half. And here's Capizudo looking to respond. Ween, a tough look, great defense inside by Samet. And we've seen Samet really improve as a defensive player. Not something that he's necessarily known for, but he puts in a lot of work. And Orr nearly gets that one to fall. Great look ahead. Ajamang. No good. As Ween went flying there. And it is chaos on the floor right now. Zevi Samet, too much on that one. And the YU faithful can't believe that call. They thought it was off of the fingertips of the Dolphins. And here's Cabezudo. Cabezudo has such a big bag of offensive tricks. As there's the big man, this is the, the two-point shot. But Cabezudo, really not known for his left hand. He actually shoots with the left, but he's not really able to drive. So YU has been forcing him left for so much of this game. Playing smart defense, reading the scouting report. There's Dotan out to Zevi with that quick release, three ball. Yes, sir! Zevi Samet extending that lead. Ajamang out to the big man. No good for three. Rebound. And a foul on the floor right there. So the basket won't count, but a great pass on the other end from Dotan Bardichov. He's been doing it all game long, really showing off the patience down low, stretching out this 2-3 zone of the Dolphins, setting up the start shooters every Samet from the opposite corner, increasing this lead to four. 
as the rest now will congregate, looks like there's some confusion. I think the Dolphins are pleading their case that that should be an M1. As in the meantime, we'll shout out Nathaniel Waxman tuning in from Durham, North Carolina, from Duke University. Aton Zeller, Zane Harrison, Chester Waxman. May he rest in peace. 17.05 remaining in this second half. Hard to keep track of all those shout outs. And some cheering from the YU side, I believe. What in the world is going on here? Would love to get some clarity. The refs are talking something over. So these fans, for some reason, are cheering. Not sure what they're cheering about. I think the question right now is whether they're going to count that bucket as an and one or whether they'll call it on the ground. The call on the floor was a blocking foul on the ground. Looks like it will remain as such. The Dolphins inbounding under their own basket. Under YU's basket, rather. Chris Tucker inside, Ween. Almost gets the tough finish, draws the contact, and he's going to go to the free throw line. And we would like to send a special thank you to our partners, JBS, our new television partner that is working with us to deliver Max Live to a nationwide television and streaming audience. Stay tuned for that. Let's see if Connor Ween gets it to go on the first. And Max Zackheim, who had such an impressive first half, will check back into this game off of injury. Ween can't get the second to go. Keeping the lead for YU at three. Bad pass by Semit. Azuman go the other way. There's that Euro step again. He couldn't pull it off that time, getting a little too fancy on that layup. And Tucker. Frustrated right there, he didn't get the pass. Looked like he had a step on the defender. Would have had an open layup as Sancheski gets the Columbus to go from three. Great shot right there, extending the lead to six points, forcing the Dolphins to call a timeout. Great start to the second half for the YU Maccabees. And we are gonna send it down to Akiva Poppers who is on the sideline. Akiva, take it away. Yeah, this game is, this crowd is going nuts. I just got to update you on the other games in the Skyline Conference quarterfinals tonight. Manhattanville defeated Merchant Marine. They'll get the winner, Manhattanville will, of this game. And on the other side of the bracket, Farmingdale defeated Long Island. They were only up by one with five minutes to go until half, but they ended up winning by 25. And Sarah Lawrence went on the road to upset Maritime by four. So it'll be Farmingdale hosting Sarah Lawrence on Thursday night and either Manhattanville coming to Yeshiva or Mount St. Vincent going to Manhattanville for that other game on Thursday night. Back to you guys in the booth. Thank you, Akiva. And leave it to Akiva Poppers to know every single score and statistic from not just the Skyline Conference, but all of D3 Ball, such an influential figure in D3 hoops. We appreciate all that you do. And Asher, I don't remember being this excited about being a Max fan in a long time. A lot of hope in this gym. Let's see if the Max can rise to the occasion. Three ball, Tucker, bottoms. An ice cold three pointer right out of the timeout. Great play drawn up from the coach right there. And I think the referees are calling that a two-point and foot on the line. But a great play call right there to their sharpshooter, Tucker, able to get that to go. And some, sta some stagnation right now from the YU Max against his 2-3 zone. Here's Orr inside, can't get his footing. Dotan had Zevi in the back door. Max gets a cutting man in Dotan, no soft touch. Dotan keeps it alive, it's anyone's ball, Max gets it, 
Inside, the action's picking up. Don't try three. No good. Crowd was ready to explode on that one. Here's Tucker out to the big man. Capizudo three ball. No good. Secured by Racy. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. There's Ween going in from the right hand side. Great defense by Zevi. Another foul is called. And it's got to be so frustrating for those Macs who are just trying to avoid those foul calls. And a great aggressive take right there from Ween, taking matters into his own hand. Things looking a little bit hectic on the offensive end. Smallest guy on the floor taking it right to the cup, able to get the foul call. Looking to cut this deficit to just two now. As the first one is hit, and just a little snippet. Derek Holly, the guard for Mount St. Vincent, has not seen much action this game, but when he was 15 years old, he was walking home alone Corbin Avenue after an evening playing basketball with his friends, and out of nowhere and without warning, a pit bull attacked him. The pit bull bit him on his right leg and then came back for seconds on his left leg. Now Derek was treated for lacerations and his story went viral on the news. Pretty crazy stuff. We've got a bit of a celebrity in the house. He's a trooper. He made it through that. He can make it through anything. Jeski hits that first one. And a big lineup on the floor right now. Got a lot of size, a lot of length. Or can't convert the second and we're going the other way. Chi looking to create for his players. He's a great playmaker for this Dolphins team. No good, great rebound there by Doton, making sure he secured that ball. Zakheim, Samet, thought about it. Almost a bad pass, Doton saves it. Oh, what a timeout call, what a heads up play there. I don't know who it was, it might have been Stanmetz. I think he's calling for a 30 second timeout, so we're gonna stay live. And Asher, what have you seen so far in this second half? First of all, I gotta just highlight, Brilliant timeout call right there. I think it was Bardichov himself calling the timeout. Realizing he's falling into the backcourt, so they will maintain possession. But Bardichov has been everywhere thus far in the second half. We saw Sanjewski knock down those massive two three-pointers. We know he can get hot quick. The signature skill, as, the, as they call it in 2K, the microwave. Getting going early in the second half, knocking them down. Already with seven quick points in the second half for Bardichov has been everywhere on both ends of the floor on that last defensive possession forcing Chi into a tough floater attempt has shown off his vision a couple great cross court passes to the star shooter Zevi Samet knocking them down so some great improvement from both teams in the second half really look for the Max to try and increase this lead as this game progresses and Doton has looked so mature Looking like a true veteran out there, showing his basketball IQ. Stepping up when it matters most. Roy inside with the mid-range shot. Falls a little bit short. Ween the other way. Racy inside, pretty spin move, and the finish. What a gorgeous finish there by Racy, the big man. And the ref saw a travel. Or is a bit confused, didn't think that he left his feet. Capizudo 
She in the corner. And Ween was open at the top of the key. Some great ball movement there to create some free space to operate. Ween again. Here's Chi, but YU staying over it. Oh, and Adi Markovic is called for the foul. Looked like that could have been called either way. Maybe an offensive foul, but the refs are gonna keep it on this side of the floor. Yeah, we know these backs faithful. We're not happy with that call. I think it was the right call though. Just a step late was Markovic sliding over, trying to take that charge on Capizudo. And Racy is a guy who is really one of the deadliest shooters in the conference. And he's a 6'5 junior. He's got some serious size. A lethal combo, get you a big man who can shoot. And here's Tucker inside, a little strong with the left hand. Capizudo with a perfect finish. And a great putback from the small guard, Capizudo, the top player for this Dolphins team. He is a PBG, professional bucket getter, and that's what they do. Right place, right time, under the basket, though he doesn't have the height advantage. Able to get the putback as Foyma with a nice slip to the basket. Good pass from Bardicha of another assist for the big guy. As the YU Max take back a one point lead. This one's heating up, Akiva. Yes, it is. Cool little perspective there. We got the point left bunch right in front of us. They seem to be very pleased with Effie's layup on the previous play. Here's Ween for three. It rimmed out. That one looked good. Zevi Samet hasn't really done much since early in this game on the offensive side. And there he throws another bad pass. Ween, and a great layup. He is fearless going up the bigger defender, Dotan Bardachev. Yeah, great take right there into the much bigger defender, Bardichev. Surprised he didn't challenge that shot a little bit more aggressively, but Samet now from three. He just starts walking down the floor. The second that releases from his hand. Great shot right there from Samet. Taking the lead back as Capazudo will have to come back on the offensive end. And Zevi Samet right on cue. I was talking about how he's had a quiet second half and he proved me wrong with a big three point shot there to bring Yeshiva up one point. Ween again, he's got the green light. He's shooting a lot, but that one rims out as well. He's just getting unlucky here. Zevi Samet again, three, yes! Zevi Samet looking automatic. And if you're the Dolphins, you're gonna have to step up. Max Zagon getting on the floor. Getting down and dirty. Jump ball, Zagon's head. The crowd's getting into it. And some confrontation there as well. Zagon is really heated. Zagon is fired up right now. This Max Faithful is fired up. They're on their feet. This game is heating up, Akiva as the chants come flying in now from the YU Max sideline. Great defense right there from Max Zakheim. Complimenting two back-to-back -back three pointers from the excellent three point shooter, Zevi Samet. And on that last three point shooter in transition, the Dolphins coach furious with DJ Tucker allowing Samet to even get an inch of space, getting that three point shot off. You know you can't leave him open at all from behind the arc, making you pay from deep. Here's Max Zackheim, smart pass inside to Roy. Freundle, back to Roy. The ball is moving plenty right now. Inside, Max Zackheim, no good on the finish. Roy with the follow. One redhead missed and another redhead put it back in. Here's Racy, gets it out to the quarter. Capizudo shoots it, and a perfect form holds the follow through. Capizudo with a quick three ball. That'll be three grapples for him. Three point lead now for the YU Max as we go to a timeout. 10.33 left in the second half. We'll be back after this. Hey, Max fans, this is Joseph Gittler, YU class of 1996, founder and chairman of Leket Israel. The skies are reopening, so come and volunteer with us in Israel as soon as you make it here. Please also consider supporting us 
as you think about your charity. And of course, go Max! If you're living with pain that affects your quality of life, we're here to help. Many patients respond well to progressive physical therapy. PM&R, the proud sponsor of the YU Maccabees men's basketball team. Let us help you reach your goals at one of our five locations in New York and New Jersey. And we are back after that short commercial break. Dotan has to be careful here. He doesn't want to be called for the eight seconds. Dangerous pass into Effie. Roy, pump fake. And a push is called. A foul. It'll be on the ground, though. But a risky move by Berdicha, leaving his feet right there in the backcourt. Fortunately, the pass got through. And here's Zevi Samet gets it inside. Freundlich, Dotan keeping that ball high, out of harm's way. Wow, Chief skied for that one, looking like a cornerback. Adjamang with a hard fall. She might have gotten hit in the face there. He's reaching for his nose, looking for the attention of the medical staff on the sideline. One of his players running into the locker room. And a huge swing right there. The Red Rocket, Zakon, at the top of the key, trying to launch a bullet pass to the wide open Samet from the corner. He's probably about 90 plus percent right there, wide open. But a great steal by the Dolphins. Taking it the other way, getting the foul call. Not able to get the first free throw to fall, but a chance here to cut the deficit to just two points. And for Sajewski, checks back into the game for Roy Ikovich. And Chi still in the game, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but a very heads up play there by Chi. As long as he's okay, I think that joke will be allowed to air. Dotan comes down with it after the missed free throw. YU with the less than comfortable lead. Or three ball again. Dagger! Or Sajewski extends his lead to six points for the Max. And a great three right there. Turned around, looked at the crowd and said, the candles stay lit, boys. Great three point shot right there, extending the lead to six points. As the Dolphins look to come back and a steal by Zevi Samet. Looks like they may have numbers, but Dotan elects to slow the ball down. The Dolphins have to be very careful here because the Max have a lot of momentum. The crowd's getting very into it. Bad pass there, but the Max got bailed out. Cabezudo visibly frustrated with that defensive play. Ball will be inbounded by guard Effie Freundlich. Freundlich gets it to Dotan. He was looking for Zevi there. Didn't find him. But there's Zevi inside. Good ball movement there. Zevi, corner three. Muddy ball. Zevi Salmon coming up big in the second half. And just too much space for a guy like that. He is automatic from behind the line, wide open from the corner. You might as well just start jogging back on defense because he will never miss that shot as Tucker with a difficult step back opportunity. Why are you looking to pull away up nine points right now? Still a lot of time on the clock, but it seems to be all YU these past few minutes. Or not again. Or Sajewski is hyped after that one, letting the crowd know about it. And just like that, YU has their biggest lead of the game with 12 points. Blocked by Zakheim! Out of bounds, and it's going the other way! I cannot contain myself right now! And Sajewski is hype walking down the floor, high-fiving fans, forcing this Dolphins team to call another timeout. Their backs against the wall. We'll see how they respond. And we will send it now to the sideline with the Kiva Poppers. Thanks, guys. I want to talk about Josh Cabezudo, the point guard of Mount St. Vincent. We've seen the entire game. The Max have been forcing him to use his left hand. They are not letting him go right, but he keeps shooting with his left hand. And the reason why is because 
He is a righty who shoots with his left hand. Very rare. All his friends make fun of it for it. He writes with his right hand. He does everything with his right hand. He throws a baseball with his right hand. The only thing he does with his left hand is shoot a basketball. Very interesting stuff. And in his left hand off the dribble, he's been having a lot of trouble tonight. Back to you guys in the booth. Thank you, Akiva, as we hear the Mishanichnas Adar chants erupting from the crowd. And how fitting we know that YU lost to this team just six days ago, and now the tables have turned in classic Adar fashion. And it's going to be YU ball after that emphatic rejection by Max Zakheim there. Zakheim hasn't really had much going offensively this game, but a huge defensive present in his first game back for the Max. As we see that Orson Jeffsky, who's in the game right now, is four for four from three-point land. And he's got 13 points. And Dotan Bordachev adding his three-point play to the mix. Why are you continuing to extend this lead? Here's Tucker looking for anything offensively. Lewis gets it over to Capizzuto. Steal by Florla. And YU not taking their foot off of the gas after that timeout, continuing the momentum. Max Zakheim for three. Ween looking to push the other way. Passes it to Cabezudo. Thought about a three, goes inside, pretty spin move. And it looked like Samet got the deflection there. Three ball from Chi, no good. Or inside, but that is a very dangerous pass. Or with the right idea, but you can't pass it under your own basket. You have to have better court awareness than that. Or with a wild shot. And Orr is holding his arm. A very scary sight for YU. And if I were YU, I would call a timeout right about now. Make sure Orr's okay. Looks like a foul was called, so at least he gets somewhat of a bang. <laughs> As you can hear the YU fans frustrated with the no call on the other end. Sanjewski likewise unhappy with that no call. He thought he should be at the line. Ween on the other end with a chance with a chance though to cut this deficit to 11 right now. 7.15 remaining so ample time for the Dolphins to cut into this deficit. But going to need to pick it up on the defensive end. Not helping their case with a missed free throw. Adjermaine is going to check back into the game. And Mount St. Vincent has had an interesting season. They are 10 and 15 overall, but they've really shown signs of improvements over the season as Adjermaine with the heads up play there. Here's Tucker inside. Beautiful little Euro step there. Yeah, an ill advised pass right there on that last possession from Zakheim. The Dolphins in a 2-2-1 press right now. And another turnover, another layup. And Coach Steinmetz will call a timeout. That's a smart call by Steinmetz. YU with some forced turnovers there. And we are going to send it to commercial break, but we will be back with some second half action after this. Hey, Max fans. This is Joseph Gittler, YU class of 1996, founder and chairman of Leket Israel. The skies are reopening. So come and volunteer with us in Israel as soon as you make it here. Please also consider supporting us as you think about your charity. And of course, go Max! Welcome back, folks, as we got about 6.49 left in this second half, and YU has built a lead for themselves, but the Dolphins not going down without a fight. Asher, talk to me about what just happened in the last few minutes of play. Well, the YU Max knocking down, I believe it was five three-point balls in a row, extending the lead to 15 points, but a quick 8-0 run 
or 7-0, 8-0 run. Some quick math right there. Unclear if it was accurate, but <laughs> definitely quick. But a 2-2-1 press right now has really gotten the YU Max flustered as Sanjewski able to break it himself right there, showing off the handles in the backcourt. YU has yet to break the press with any real promise. And another turnover. It looks like she is going to have the easy two. So this one is getting interesting again. YU not having any answer for this press. And it's starting to cost them. Zakheim goes down. And almost looking like a repeat of the last time these teams played, just six days ago, a 16-0 run late in the second half by the Dolphins. Right now, a 9-0 run by them, forcing a lot of turnovers. So this game has really turned around in just the past couple minutes. And YU is no stranger to comebacks as Max Zakheim with the floater there as Saturday night they had a pretty crazy game at Maritime to close out the regular season and snap their four game losing streak. They were down 10 with 2.30 left and they miraculously pulled off the win. There was a controversial technical foul called that resulted in the win for the Max. But the Max know good and well that it ain't over till it's over as Doton for a three and that one hits the top. The stanchion I believe they said. Never heard that one. Is that what they said? That's what Charlie normally says. He's normally on the call with me, so. I'm gonna to defer to the expert, Charlie Bentheim, on that one. And there's a two, which is no good, but she getting it back. Dotan with the over the shoulder catch there. Showing a little athleticism, Zebby Samet. Inside to Roy. Zevi playing smart basketball, not forcing any shots, although we know he can hit those tough ones. Or Sanjewski, and that might have been a little bit over the top on Dotan, but it's gonna go the other way. Defense chance from the crowd. YU needs all the crowd participation they could get as a pretty finish inside on the left. We talked about how Cabezudo is not known for his left hand, but proving the haters wrong on that one. And a little bit too help with the help side defense there from Samet as Cabezudo will get called for the foul. That'll be the six on the Dolphins. I believe that'll be his third personal, or his fourth personal rather. But on that previous possession, need the help to come out earlier on. Just way too easy. Getting a high ball screen was Capizzuto turning the corner, taking it right to the basket, reminiscent of another play we saw earlier in this game, his first two points of the game. So look for some more help side defense to come earlier on from Samet. And Capizzuto is taking it to the top. Capizzuto has four fouls. He's going to have to be very careful. Zevi Samet, three. Yes! And it wasn't as pretty as it normally is, but it counts for the same three. Looked like the ball was just trying to crawl outside of the basket. Impossible when it comes from Zevi Samet's hands. As some good defense right there from Zakheim and a good rebound corralled right there from Dotan Berdicho. Zakheim honestly taking a lot of wear and tear on his body tonight. Really playing physical basketball as he's known to do, but... Again, he's got to be careful because he is an injury-prone player. As he's going to get the ball at the top of the key, look to set up some offense. And I have a feeling this is the last time we're going to sit down tonight as we approach the closing few minutes of this game. Salmon again for three. Oh, that one was close call. And Dotan fell out of bounds. Again, he's taking accountability. Saying, yeah, that was off me, although now it looks like he's already can't make up his mind, and the crowd is letting the refs hear it. Cabazudo going to the right, too strong, but active hands by Ajamang. 
And a three ball, Zevi Samet with an undisciplined defensive play there. And the ref is gonna give him three, I believe. And Elliot Steinmetz is not happy. He thought it was two points. He thought his foot was on the line there. Yeah, not the time to be giving up offensive rebounds for the YU Max right here. It was a great job, the entire defensive possession from Zakon. Forcing Capizudo into a tough floater opportunity with his right hand. Not able to get, to get it to go. Just got to finish the play with a defensive board. So the Dolphins now will have a chance to cut this lead to just six if he can get this last free throw to go. 3.39 remaining. A lot of time. Both teams in the bonus at this point will go to the line for a one and one. Expect the Dolphins to come out in their 2-2-1 press. Make or miss on this free throw right here. And we have Jalen Lewis, the forward, back on the floor, and he is a lengthy player. So expect some defensive stops here. Although, YU doing a solid job at breaking that press there. Max Zakheim into Roy. And the shot clock starting to expire, but no one guarding Roy, and he recognized the opportunity, and he sees the moment. Mid-range shot for Roy there, brings the Max up eight. And there's Lewis with the follow. So a timeout is taking, and we are gonna send it to one last commercial break. We'll be right back with the end of the fourth quarter. Don't go anywhere. And we've got three minutes and change left in this game. But it is still anyone's ball game as YU looking to break that press yet again. Devi, Dotan, good patience there by Dotan, making sure not to make any turnovers. This late in the game, they can be so costly. Dotan over to Orr again. And he airballed that one, missing his first three of the game. You can't get him all. As there's Ajamang, a great closeout there by Max Zakheim, not allowing Ajamang to have the space to shoot that one. Zevi Samet thought he grew some contact there. But this late in the game, the rest are going to let him play. But don't love the shot attempt right there from Samet though, it was a one-on-one -on -one in transition. Up six points, have 30 seconds on the shot clock to work with. Not the easiest shot. I'd like to see him peel that ball back out, run some time off the clock. But he took the shot, wasn't able to get it to go, and quickly the other way were the Dolphins, as Ween will now, go to, will now go to the free throw line with a chance to cut the deficit to four points. Ween hits that one. And brings this game within five points with 2.21 left on the clock. And a quick shout out while we're at it to Nava Waldman watching from Lakewood as we not able to get the second free throw to fall. Here's Max Zackheim, Dotan. Roy inside. YU has to be smart here, Zevi Samet. Nothing, although there's a mid-range shot and Roy has been so 
so consistent with that shot as another timeout is called a big time play by Roy Ikovich in the clutch and we're gonna stay live. We do not wanna miss any action here. And Asher, in the closing minute 55 of this game, what is the key for both of these teams to secure the win and head over to the next round of these Skyline playoffs. Yeah, before getting to the keys, just have to highlight those two massive mid-range shots right there from Itkovic. The analytics will tell you not the best percentage shot to take, only a two-pointer from just in front of the three-point line, but Itkovic is famous for that shot, knocking two down right there, showing why. So a great job from him with the quick four points. But the key for the YU Max is gonna be the same thing it's been for the past seven or so minutes of the game and it's just gonna be taking care of the basketball and taking smart shots. They were up 15 points just six minutes ago or so. The Dolphins jumped into this 2-2-1 press and forced the YU Max to make mistakes and unnecessary mistakes, just speeding them up a little bit and throwing the ball away in the backcourt. The Dolphins getting out, getting a bunch of layups in transition. So no doubt the Dolphins will try to continue to press the YU Max in the backcourt. The YU Max just need to remain patient, make the Dolphins foul them, and close this game out at the free throw line with their two excellent free throw shooters in Max Zakheim and Zevi Samet. Some expert analysis there from our trusty color commentator, Asher Dower. As here is Tucker over to Ajamang. And that one is no good, but a big rebound inside by Racy and Tucker with another three-point opportunity. Why you getting very lucky there? Orson Jeski gets it over half court to Dotan. Max Zakheim, exactly who you want with the ball in his hands at this point in the game. He has so much experience in these big moments. Roy Ikovich being very aggressive inside and forcing his way. And it's a nine-point game. The Dolphins are gonna have to move quickly, and there they do. Tucker with the quick layup. And a foul there by Ajamang. Not sure that was intentional, but Max kind of went into him. And we know that they're in the bonus, so Max gonna head to the free throw line. And a heads up play right there. Look at NBA ass from Max Zakheim, almost leaping into the defender, Ajamang. Picking up the foul call, going to the line. Exactly who you want there, as you pointed out, the best free throw shooter is Max Zakheim as this place quiets down for his free throw attempt. Calm, cool, collected at the stripe. Extending this lead to eight points. Gonna be a tall order for this Dolphins to come back at this point. And Max Zakheim delivers on both free throws. He's got that clutch gene. Here's Tucker on the left-hand side. A beautiful play and one. Tucker doing everything offensively for the Dolphins at this point in the game. And I'm gonna try some math of my own. If he hits this free throw, the game is within two possessions. Am I correct? Correct. <laughs> Dodged the bullet there. But just an errant defensive play right there from Sonjewski fouling him. No reason to do that as Tucker now Hits that free throw, and as you pointed out, a two possession game. You're okay giving up that layup attempt. A seven point lead with a minute left. Pretty comfortable as Salmon now goes down the other way. And Bardichov again with an ill-advised shot attempt, up six points. No need for that. Ween as inside. We and I don't believe there was any contact on that play. The YU faithful is furious right now with that call. Yeah, not sure I agree with that call either, but don't even want to give the referees an opportunity to make that call. No reason the Dolphins should even be in that situation right there. With about 25 fresh seconds on the shot clock on the other end. An ill-advised layup opportunity as you see Dotan Berdichev apologizing to Itkovic at the stripe, recognizing that it wasn't a great shot attempt as Ween cuts the lead to just four points for the max. So no need to foul here necessarily. Smart timeout call by Bordichev as he got trapped in the corner. But this is now a game. And it's largely due to some, un to, to some unforced errors from the YU Max in these last couple minutes. 
It's getting to be a nail biter, as of course we're gonna stay live here with 46 seconds left, and it's a four point deficit for the Dolphins. Asher, who is gonna be the go-to guy for the Dolphins if they want to produce offensively and tie this game before it is over, perhaps even go for the win? If it comes down to it, it'll likely be Capizudo. If not, probably their number two, DJ Tucker. Capizudo's had an excellent, an excellent game, very efficient from the field. He's eight for 12 in this game, 17 points. He's one through three from the three-point line, and that's despite YU expending a lot of their resources on him defensively. But right now it's going to come down to YU securing the ball, not turning it over in the backcourt. We know what you can expect the Dolphins to come out in that intense 2-2-1 press that they've shown these past few minutes. And you would hope that Elliot Steinmetz has something planned for this inbound. Why you not doing a terrific job of breaking that press? Elliot must have drawn something up as we see in the whisper here. Doton was open, although it seems like Tucker <laughs> caught wind of it. Didn't Did you really spoil. think there was a chance that Tucker was going to hear you from the court? <laughs> you never know with that guy. He has eyes and ears everywhere. Would hate to be the one that sabotages this one for the max. And Roy Ikovich is going to be the one to inbound the ball. We've got two of the primary ball handlers for the max in the backcourt waiting for the inbound. Zevi Samet, Max Zackheim. And there seems to be some sort of delay. And it's funny, the crowd has actually quieted down as we approach the last minute of the game. They were loud during that big spurt. Oh, Zevi wide open. Dotan on the other side of the court. Or Sanjewski. At least the ball is past half court at this point. He forces his way inside and in a strong play by Or Sanjewski. And Roy with a missed opportunity there to see Zevi Samet, who was wide open on the left-hand side of the court, but he got it to Max, and they were somehow able to create a play out of that. And a very fortunate foul called right there for Sanjewski. I, I do believe it was a foul, though it could have been very dangerous territory had he not gotten the foul call and missed that layup. Ends up being a positive as he was in the shooting motion was only the eighth foul called on the Dolphins as Sanjewski misses the first one, so this is definitely a game, Akiba. Yes, it is, as the big man, Adrian Racy, 6'5", enters the game. He's gonna need a big rebound here if Orr cannot convert the free throw. And Asher, I think it's time that we stand up. I'm gonna, you can stay seated. Thank you for joining me. As Ajamang, has to move very quickly with the crossover, but Zevi Samet coming up with the steal, and if he's smart, he'll pull it out, and he does, but a good foul there by Ween, and YU with a big defensive stop, and the crowd waving goodbye. I don't know if that's the classiest play at this point, but Zevi Samet, who is an extremely efficient free throw shooter, looking to extend this lead and put this one in the books. Damn it, good on the first. The score is 80 to 74. If Samet hits this one, it might take a miracle for the Dolphins to climb their way back into this contest. Samet, ice cold on the second. Tabazudo, behind the back move. Racy nearly lost his dribble. Great defense by the Max. Tucker getting inside, and the refs are really giving the Dolphins everything right now. Minimal contact by the Max, but the Max will happily take that. They don't want any three-point looks, obviously. Very impartial in this one. <laughs> Late Akiva. Though this game appears to be all but over. Seven-point lead. Don't want to jinx anything. Though it would require a miracle for the Dolphins to come back in this one. 
So a, a good job by the Max. Closing this one out in the late goings of this game. Smart play by Samet on that last steal. Peeling it out, picking up the foul call, stepping up to the line and knocking down two as the Dolphins cut this lead to five points. They'll call timeout trying to draw some kind of trap press in the backcourt. Okay, so a five point game and we know Asher that you are a basketball aficionado. So if the Dolphins want to come back in this game, what are they going to have to do? If they do come up with the steal, they go for three, they go for the quick two. What are you thinking? I think at this point, down five, by the time they get a steal, if they do get one, it'll be under 15 seconds unless they somehow miraculously pick up the ball right under the hoop. So I think it's going to require definitely a steal for them. Even if the YU Max missed two at the stripe, it's going to be very difficult for the Dolphins to bring the ball all the way down the court and score five points within 10 or so seconds. So expect them to come out with a lot of tenacity here. You see them meeting at the top of the three-point line right now. And this is their season on the line right now. A couple of seniors, we know the backcourt mates, and Capizudo and Tucker. These guys don't want to go home. So 17 seconds to give it all they got. And we're going to try to fit in the trivia answer. The question was, who is the all-time University of Mount St. Vincent leading scorer? The answer is current head coach James Mooney with 1,793 points from 02 to 06. Coach Mooney, a hooper in his own right. As we are back to the action, Zevi Samet. And there's a foul. And Cabezudo looks devastated. They were trying so hard to get that steal which you mentioned was so necessary to their efforts here. But they're going to send Zevi Samet, the trusty free throw shooter, to the other side of the floor to try to close this one out for good. And you can all will expect him to hit at least one here. Up five points, looking to extend this to a three possession lead and close this game out. Capazudo untucking his jersey. Effectively waving the white flag here with 13.7 remaining in this game. A hard fought battle from both teams. Just have to respect the resilience, the perseverance from the Dolphins this entire second half. Mounting a great comeback down 15 just six or so minutes ago as Capizudo will pass it off to Ween. Ween with a prayer there, and Tucker came flying in. He hit his own player. That was a scary sight to behold as Edmund and Tucker collide and we hope and pray that they are okay. Both very slow to get up. As it looks like Zevi Samet going over and making sure that Ajaming is okay as we see the replay. And it's always the worst when you see something like this happen in the closing seconds. Obviously, every bit of game still matters, but looks like this one's out of reach. And Ajamang just went down. We hope and pray that he's okay. Looks like he's holding his shoulder a little bit as he's tended to by the Mount St. Vincent staff and the YU crowd giving a well-deserved round of applause to Ajamang and all of his teammates who have fought so hard tonight in this playoff battle. And when I say battle, it truly was. Yeah, I don't want to speculate, but look like he got hit in his rib cage. Hopefully, just got the wind knocked out of him and it's not any more serious as the, as the crowd gives him a round of applause as he's able to walk off the court on his own two feet. And Elliott's Diamonds will now empty the bench, sending in Hillel Banish. And Ezra Siklik with smiles on their faces. You can bet that Svi and Akiva Belazon are celebrating at home to see those two guys check into the game. As we also have Tom Beza and Ari Schlar 
So Salmon is the only starter that we're naming this game. I guess Coach Steinmetz is pretty confident about his team's chances at this point. Although Samet, with an uncharacteristic miss there. Samet hits that second one. And Jacob Roden going to come in the game for Zevi. And the YU Max have secured the playoff win and will advance to the next round of conference play. Very, very exciting result. And both teams shaking hands. The Max with a well-deserved win. And thank you so much, folks, for joining us for this production. And we would like to thank everyone who made this production possible. Our executive director, Eitan Traurig, executive producer, Zevi Panzer, director, David Raviv, associate producer, Yosef Silver, assistant producers, Matt Lauren, David Sampson, Zeke Swelling, and Avery Stepner, and our cameraman, Shmuel Gopin, Derek Fuller, Donnie Horowitz, and Jared Lazarus. Thank you so much for everything that you do. And folks, tune in for the next game as the Max advance in the playoffs. Signing off here from the booth. The Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation Center has been providing its patients with the best possible care of sports, spine, orthopedic, and neuromuscular conditions. Emphasis is placed on manual techniques and individualized home exercise programs. Let us help you reach your goals at one of our five locations in New York and New Jersey. I see the metaphor of sports being very important in understanding the life of Jews in the United States. It's not so much who wins the game, but whether you're allowed to play the game, whether you're part of the group. And Marty Glickman's story is a way of studying the question of do Jews fit in through the metaphor of sports. Well, the Yeshiva basketball team is doing very, very well now, and JBS is broadcasting the game. My take on that is the fact that the Yeshiva team is doing well. And the most interesting thing, thing for me, when people forget about how many games they won, is that when they play in the tournament, the first round game, which takes place on Friday, doesn't, take, doesn't start at 8 o'clock in the evening. It starts at 12 noon. The NCAA, which is the overriding body that controls sports, has more rules than the Shulchan Aruch, the Code of Jewish Law. But they're accommodating us. It's another barometer of where Jews, uh, right. Jews uh, fit in America. So it's so great that JBS is doing this. Sadly, Mark, who did the first time we broadcasted a game, when they first made the tournament, he was the MC. He was the anchor man from JBS. So, you know, so much of what Mark wanted to do, we're going to try to do as best we can we are. with our limited abilities right. to fulfill, you know, so many of his dreams. And we are back here with one of the stars of the game, the sharpshooter, Zevi Salmon. We're going to send it down to Akiva Poppers with Zevi live on the sideline. Take it away, Akiva. I am here with Zevi Samet, the star of the game, as the Max beat Mount St. Vincent 84-76 to advance to the Skyline Conference quarterfinals. Zevi, 30 points. Oh, it's good for you to be back. But tell me what it's like to have Max and Orr back on the floor along with you. They're the best. Every guy on the team has something ind individual, unique, that helps us. And, you know, guys had to step up when they were out, and they did a phenomenal job. And then when they came back in, everyone was able to find their role and and continue to get back to where we are without having to uh, trial and error. It was amazing. And you know, some games earlier in the year, we saw you gassed at the end of games. You were exhausted. Tonight, 38 minutes, but you look in fine shape. Tell me about conditioning yourself over the course of the year to get the playoff time where you're able to play full games. It's a mentality. Sometimes I get tired, and that's it's the quote. What separates someone good from great is that when you're, ti when you're tired, you keep going on the guy that was not so tired or whatever, I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> but the point is, is that comes playoff time, I gotta give the maximum energy as I can, and I trust in Hashem. And, and, speaking of energy, the crowd tonight, 
was incredible. Tell me what it's like playing in front of a crowd like this. I don't think we've had this in at least a year, if not two. Tell me what it's like to feed off of their energy. It's amazing to have all the guys that I'm in school with and cheer with and classes with, see them all day in a small campus, to come to the game and cheer us on is unbelievable. The energy is incredible. Zevi Samet, guys, the star of the game. Max going to the semifinals where they will play. Bob is a professional chef. They'll play Manhattanville at 8 o'clock on Thursday night. Tickets will be on sale. Details will be announced on the Max Live social media. Back to you guys in the booth. All right, thank you, Akiva, and thank you, Zevi. So everyone looking very excited for this next round. And we will see you then. Tune in to Max Live for the next game. Have a good one, folks.